Hello, I'm Genoa. <laughs> I'm Mo. We're having the sex the talk. The sex talk. That's right. I guess what we're talking about today. Codependence. I've been there. I've been there. More than once. <laughs> How do you know? if your relationship has become codependent? That is a good question. What, what, what's the difference between codependence and interdependence? Because interdependence is good, right? In a relationship you are interdependent. You depend on each other. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong with be, you know, depending on each other? Yeah. In our society, this concept of when you're in a partnership, like you are there for your partner mm -hmm. all the time. You support yeah. them, you help them, etc. Um, but what this often gets, gets translated into is fixing problems for your partner. Oh. And losing yourself. Losing yourself and, and taking care of the person um, to, to everybody's detriment. Mm -hmm. So one example that I always use is your partner comes home and is stressed out or had a bad day or they get off the phone with their, their, one of their family members and your response is, don't worry, everything's gonna be okay. That's bad. It is because it invalidates your feelings. Yeah, it's it's bullshit. It's like saying, oh no, 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 it's everything's fine. gonna be okay, and then guess what? When it's not, guess who they're gonna blame? Does that make you codependent? Because you say bullshit thing? I mean, we've all told a friend, don't worry, it's gonna be fine. We've all said that. Well, this is, I, this is what I think is like the gateway drug to oh, codependence because... The petting of... Yeah. Oh, you're sort of brushing things under the rug. You're taking care mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. your partner. You don't like to see your partner on sad or discomfort. Mm -hmm. So you try to make things better for them. Mm -hmm. This is just a very small example of these grand things that people try to do to take care of their partner. Partner. Dropping everything and doing everything for the other partner. Losing your identity as a self and becoming a we. I feel like that's the big one that happens yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Where you just stop having an I and it's always a we. Yeah. We can't go to that, we this, we that. Maybe you could go to a party by yourself for once. I highly recommend it. Yeah. I always recommend that couples have alone time mm -hmm. with their friends, by themselves, with their family. Where your partner isn't always coming along. Mm -hmm. Are you weeing a little too much? I think that is a big <laughs> indicator of codependence. It is. So and how do you do? How do you support your partner and be a we but still be an I? Like, right, well, going mm -hmm. back to the fixing issue is when your partner complains or is is venting, allow your partner to have their own experience, yes. have their own feelings, mm -hmm. and you be a support. You can sit next to your partner and be like, I'm sorry, that sounds really frustrating, mm -hmm. instead of, don't worry, it'll get better. Mm -hmm. You know, validate their feelings. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let them have their experience. Let them have their experience. And Let you don't have to feel it for them either. Like, your day doesn't have to be ruined because their day was ruined. Mm -hmm. And, That's important too. And by allowing them to have their feelings, you allow them to solve their own problems. We want to be really careful of not solving our partner's problems mm -hmm. because that opens up the door to even more sort of enmeshment and codependence. Yeah, and have your friends gone by the wayside? Like your friends that are just yours? Mm -hmm. Have your favorite activities gone? Have you gone horseback riding or have you gone to play that sport you like or done those things you usually do with your friends or are you too busy being a we? You know, is your is your singular identity gone now that you're in this relationship? Yeah. Yeah, so your hobbies, your friends, those are often things that are the first to go when you become too Enmeshed. involved in your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then when things go wrong in your relationship, you You're don't fucked. have that support system, that self-identity to mm -hmm. call on to bring, you know, some coping skills to help you get through. And you know what you do have? You have resentful friends who are like, oh, seriously? You want to hang out with me now because you're um, fighting with your girlfriend? Because I haven't seen you in six months. Yeah. And I also want to point out that sometimes codependence relationships teeter on there being um, some manipulation and control. So if you feel like you've lost contact with your friends um, because your partner is not very supportive of you going out and mm -hmm. seeing your friends, that's not, good. that's not good either. That's not a good indicator of a healthy relationship yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you want a partner that's very supportive of you spending time with your mm -hmm. friends within reason. You know, if you're going out seven nights a week and you're not leaving any time for your partner, well then yeah, your partner should be a little bit upset. I yeah. can see that. But if you just want to see your friends a couple nights a week and pursue your hobby, 
a couple times a week and they don't they're not supportive of that then that might be a red flag yeah you shouldn't have to lose who you are and your individuality because you are with another person yeah in a relationship yeah because you're a we you can still get to be an I yeah there's there's an I and we <laughs> There's an us and you. <laughs> this is a sex talk. Sex talk!